Yeah. Okay, I'm also going to get on board Jal Irani and talk about what's happening with the market and in particular Reliance because Jal, high afternoon. Reliance is what broke the markets back on uh, Monday and we're seeing much a continuation of that trend. Another 2% not coming in for Reliance today as well. Why the case, Jal? So I'd say two reasons. I mean, uh, firstly, these are difficult times. Uh, you know, the COVID recovery by no measure is... Uh, complete and uh, uh, and uh, whether it's for the refining sector or the retail sector, difficult times remain. So within that context, uh, while uh, Reliance has done, uh, done um, uh, very well, uh, you know, at the same time, at the same time, that's weighed down things uh, dramatically. But uh, I think uh, structurally and also very importantly, um, you know, um, the disclosure levels uh, i.e. essentially for gross refining margins um, isn't there you know that is by far the refining business is the largest business and uh, reliance uh, of course uh, for uh, reasons that they do justify which is that they want uh, the market to look at uh, fully integrated operations right from oil to oil to chemicals rather than the intermediate uh, uh, refining but then uh, by far refining is the largest business, whether it's an intermediate business or not. And to take that away from sort of uh, 20 years of uh, trends and analysis um, actually hasn't done uh, any good at all from a disclosure level perspective. And uh, the third thing I'd also say is that I think the market itself got ahead of its, uh, I mean, got, got ahead. As you may recall, we downgraded Reliance about six months back because uh, we really said that the market asked for the so-called new age business, I mean, the, the consumer related businesses is 30% uh, CAGR growth sustaining over the next 10 years, which is really market is assuming that it's a given that it's gonna, it's, uh, it's gonna succeed. And the fact of the matter is actually whatever one may say at the net profit level attributable to Reliance Industries, uh, the consumer facing businesses, which is geo and retail, is only 25% of bottom line. So you're really, in a sense, uh, getting a relatively small business with very high expectations when the core business uh, is uh, oil to chemicals. And within that, you have really had disclosure levels falling sharply. So I think uh, that's the reason why the market pummeled it yesterday itself. Or was it day before? Sorry, Monday. Right. Um, John, how do you read the explanation from the management for the change norms of reporting the, uh, the pet chem and refining segment in terms of were you satisfied with what the management had to say? Uh, did your clients probe at all regarding this issue? Were there any questions raised? So I think uh, rightfully from the management's perspective, they're really looking uh, you know, out um, over the horizon significantly and uh, what they are strategically uh, and decided and rightfully so that uh, they want to focus more on the chemicals and petrochemicals part of the business the value added part of the business this is going to be a growing business uh, and uh, also to that extent uh, the carbon footprint will uh, reduce uh, and they have um, you know very uh, very significantly essentially stated and a very bold target at that and that's uh, actually uh, credit to them that uh, by 2035, they are looking to have zero uh, net car I mean, uh, be carbon neutral, basically. Uh, so uh, basically, they are uh, attempting to steer the market more towards, you know, what matters in the longer term. Um, so I think, I think, uh, so I mean, they, 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 I, I would say from a long term perspective, they're correct from that thinking. Uh, but I would really think is that once they're pros is significantly down the road and they've demonstrated ra uh, that rather than saying hey look stop looking at the biggest business suddenly and we're telling you that <laughs> you know look at look at now the petrochemical business look at the integrated uh, integrate business uh, I think that's the folly I mean what needs to be done is um, essentially you demonstrate that uh, you are getting to value add businesses rather than just saying stop looking at that uh, intermediate uh, intermediate business altogether basically
Right. Well, but the fact of the matter is, whatever be the earnings, I don't know whether it merits the 7% fall that you've seen, 5% on Monday and other 2% today. Given how much under pressure the rest of the market is and the fact that FIRs have turned, uh, you know, sellers the last three days, maybe we could see some more pressure build in the markets. Who knows? And uh, Reliance is going to fall further. Do you think time has come yet, as I see, just about defending the 1900 rupee per share mark to buy in into the stock yet? Or would you say wait it out? We could see lower levels and then it becomes a buy. So we waited or downgrade and waited out recommendation effectively. Uh, because, uh, see, let's not forget that um, while Reliance has uh, underperformed the market very sharply in the last six months, it did lead the increase and not only led the increase just prior to that till about June, July of 2020. Uh, but for the last four years, it's been an excellent performer. And uh, to that extent, actually the uh, a bulk of the valuation, um, bulk of the stock increase has been a valuation increase. So on a very rough reckoning, uh, the stock has gone from, uh, the stock has gone from a PR of roughly about 10 times four years back. Uh, to a little less than 30 PER. So that's that's uh, really because um, uh, the market from being an extreme disbeliever four years back that Geo is not going to succeed. Um, you know, uh, four years back, the market was giving a 50% discount, 30 to 50% discount to the invested capital. Two thirds of the invested capital was dead. Now, if you go 50% discount to the invested capital, you're not only saying that equity value is zero but 25 percent of the debt is 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 going to be written written off now the reason i'm telling you this is because it's really the investors mindset which has changed dramatically uh, the fundamentals have of course improved but the investors have gone ahead of themselves i mean they've bumped up the valuations threefold and really uh, really the ask for growth is um, extremely high um, so therefore, therefore, we feel that um, you know more realistic levels are what we would be looking for in terms of valuations. Amit, up. What's the outlook on Reliance Industries when it comes to earnings growth? What is it that you're penciling in, and what's the outlook uh, on the stock in the long haul? So. Um, so, I mean, um, uh, despite uh, recent uh, earnings pressures at the EBITDA level especially because uh, at the net level they've done reasonably well uh, because of almost zero tax and lower, uh, 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 greater investment income. Uh, but I think uh, uh, in the uh, in the sort of medium term, they should have a fairly healthy earnings growth. I mean, in the I'd say somewhere in the teens, uh, and perhaps even the higher higher teens, basically. So uh, I I don't think that's um, uh, I mean while while there's potential for some risk there, but at the same time they have commissioned huge capacities, right? And uh, that is what now is uh, I mean there's an operational leverage. Uh, which is kicking in any case, may be in the form of a six and a half billion dollar Petco gasifier. They just started commissioning a six billion dollar upstream business, which may add a billion dollars per year or more in terms of EBITDA. And uh, of course, uh, on the retail side of the business also, their brick and mortar business, after you know 13, 14 years of uh, actually building that business now, out now is at an operational leverage phase. Uh, so I think earnings growth in the medium term uh, is going to be reasonably good. Uh, I mean, especially in the context of market. And if I remember correctly, in the past five, seven years, Reliance is actually earnings growth has nearly grown at twice the pace of the market earnings growth. So that's that's not really been uh, that's not really been an issue. Uh, the, the the issue is really the growth expectations, as I mentioned repeatedly, of the retail and geo business. Has uh, has uh, has gone to uh, you know 30% CAGR ask, um, and and at the cost of reputation, notably the retail business and the digital services business are only 29% of net profit attributed to Reliance. I'm not talking about EBITDA. In the EBITDA line, the way accounting works is you 
capture 100% of these businesses uh, 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 in part of the consolidated EBITDA, but Reliance only owns 67% of Geo, uh, Geo uh, the, the Geo platforms, and 85% uh, of retail. So you got to you got to adjust for that at the net profit at total level. So it's actually a smaller business where the market is expecting huge growth. That is really the that is really what is uh, the stock price driver. Look, frankly, the fundamental thought. I mean, you know, this goes back to textbook theory that valuations tend to drive up stocks more than earnings, and this is really a classic textbook scenario uh, of that, basically. It's been a pleasure having you on board. Thanks much for just giving us a deeper analysis as to what has been uh, the outlook when it comes to um, you know this retail disclosure norm for Reliance Industries and how the street should be looking at it. For now, by the way, a quick status check on RIL 1903. It's down about two percent in trade. Um, mildly calm off from the low point of the day, but 13,962 nonetheless on the index. Let's. Um, Let's slip into a quick break then right here on the show. Stay with us for more.